Hello and welcome back to the Wargamer and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to paint the US Marines for bolt action and I'll be using the Army Painter range of paints to do so. Once you've assembled your miniature the first task is to prime it and for this I've used a grey spray primer. Now once that's done we can begin by painting the miniature and we'll be starting off by painting the jacket and the trousers and for this I'll be using Army Green. Now with all the base coats in this video I would recommend using a mixture of one part paint to one part water, allowing this first layer to dry and then applying a second layer over the top. The reason for this is because it gives us a really nice and even coverage over the miniature without obscuring the details by applying the paint too thickly. With the base layer of army green completed, the next step is to apply a wash of military shader over the areas we painted in the last step. This wash will flow into those recesses and really help to bring out the detail by enhancing the shading. Much like the base coat, I'll be watering down my wash in parts of one part wash to one part water. Now if you find that after you've applied a layer and allowed it to thoroughly dry that the wash isn't quite strong enough for your liking, you can always apply another layer over the top. Once our washes have dried, we're going to be further enhancing some of the detailing in this miniature by applying a highlight of combat fatigues. Now this will be focused on those raised sections of cloth, and by bringing them out and applying that thin line of paint, it'll just really enhance the detailing in this miniature. Now when applying your highlights, it's recommended that you slightly water down your paint. Roughly two parts paint to one part water will really improve the flow of the paint and make it a lot easier to pick out those fine lines. With the jacket and trousers completed, the next step is to start painting the webbing on the miniature, and for this we'll be using a base coat of hemp rope. Now some of these areas can be a little bit fiddly, so use a smaller brush for these areas, and also be very careful that you don't overspill onto the areas that we've already painted. With the base coat of hemp rope completed, the next step is to apply a wash of soft tone ink over the webbing we painted in the previous step. Now this will not only enhance the details by flowing into those recesses, but also slightly stain the colour of the webbing as well. The final step in painting the webbing is to apply a fine highlight along the edges of these areas using Banshee Brown. With the webbing completed, the next step is to paint the leather areas of the miniature. This includes the boots, but also any leather scabbards that you may have on the miniature as well. We want to paint all of these areas, first of all, with a base coat of dirt spatter. With the base coat dry, the next step is to apply a wash of strong tone ink over the leather areas that we painted in the last step. The final step in painting the leather areas is to apply a highlight of fur brown to the raised sections. Again, make sure you use a thin brush for this and also create that mixture of one part paint to one part water. Whilst you have the fur brown to hand, you can use this to base coat the wooden areas of the weapon as well as the grip on the bayonet as well. With the base coat of fur brown completed, I'll now be applying a wash of mid brown over the wooden areas. This is because it's dark enough to flow into those recesses and help to bring out the detailing, but it'll still maintain that reddish brown colouring that we're looking for in these wooden areas. The very final step in painting the wooden areas on the miniature is to apply a fine highlight of cobalt skin. The next area of our marine that we'll be painting will be the skin areas and we want to start off with a base coat of tanned flesh. Now some of these areas might be quite tricky to reach so make sure you use a thin brush to make sure you've got full control and take your time and just be very steady with the application of this paint. Now in this next step we're going to be slightly changing up the pattern that we've followed so far. So instead of applying a wash at this stage I'll instead be applying a highlight of barbarian flesh over the tan fleshed areas we painted in the previous step. This includes areas such as the fingers, the bridge of the nose, the cheekbones, the lips and also the chin as well. Basically the more prominent features we want to pick out using the lighter coloured flesh tone. The final step in painting the skin is to apply some thin down flesh wash over the areas we painted in the last two steps. Now it's important to dilute your mixture here because painting over the faces needs to be a lot more subtle than painting other areas. So we don't want to be too overpowering with the shading or darken down the skin too much. So roughly one part wash to two parts water should suffice and if you're still not happy with this once it's dried you can simply apply another layer over the top. The next area on this US Marine that I'll be painting will be the camouflage covering on the helmet and we want to start off by applying a base coat of Banshee Brown. Now this camouflage pattern wasn't exclusive to the helmet, so you could apply it to the jacket and trousers if you wished. To achieve the camouflage pattern, I'm going to be using a small piece of foam dipped into some paint instead of using a regular brush. So I'm using Desert Yellow first of all to apply the first few patches to the helmet. You just want to apply this sparingly across the entirety of the covering. In this next step, I'll be using the exact same technique from the last step, but this time I'll be using Leather Brown instead. 
To finish off painting the helmet, we now want to apply a wash of strong tone ink across the entirety of the helmet. This will darken down the colour of the camouflage ever so slightly and also give it a dirty and worn look as well. In this next step, we'll be base coating all of the metal areas with matte black. Now these areas include some of the equipment, but also the rifle and the webbing straps as well. Now the reason for a matte black base coat is because we want to give the effect that these areas are blackened metal. So we want to start off with a black base coat and then we'll be using metallics in the next step. The final step in painting our marine is to highlight the edges of the black areas that we painted in the last step using gun metal. This highlight will subtly give these areas a metallic feel without making them too bright. And here we have the completed US Marine. You can also see that I've painted the base to represent mud and added some long tufts of grass. Now you can find a full list of the paints used in this tutorial in the description below along with all the tools that I've used to produce this video as well. Whilst there you will also find links to both my Facebook and Instagram pages which you can follow to find out what projects that I'm currently working on. Now if you enjoyed this tutorial please do let me know in the comments below and also give me some suggestions for other bolt action infantry you would like to see me tackle in the future. And also make sure you subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest video releases. And finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, because without you guys, I would not be able to produce these videos as frequently as I do. So big thank you to you. And if you're interested in supporting me as well, I'll include a link in the description below to my Patreon page. And from there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which has really helped me in keeping this production level up. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.